What's up, Trojans? So the season's over. The Giants don't have much of a shot at anything with two of the potential starting quarterbacks out, Daniel Jones and Tyrod Taylor. And honestly, the way Daniel Jones was playing against the Raiders, Tyrod was really the starter at that point because Daniel Jones was just terrible before going out with the, uh, what is confirmed to be an ACL. So he'll be out possibly in the next year. But it doesn't matter because the season's over now. I mean, the Giants aren't going to recover from 2-7 and seven with Tommy DeVito out there. Nothing against Tommy DeVito, but there's not a high percent chance of a practice squad QB leading a 2-7 and seven team to the playoffs or anywhere beyond that. I think about where this uh, draft order is at right now is where the Giants will be come the end of the season. Maybe get to four wins, maybe five wins. And honestly, I'd prefer that, just so no one does anything too stupid. But Giants should be looking quarterback. It's a glaring hole on this roster right now. Up there with, like, wide receiver and offensive line. (laughs) Mainly offensive positions. Uh, Giants could also use a corner. Uh, Xavier McKinney's likely leaving, so could use a safety. And uh, Laren Williams may have been missed on that defensive line, so maybe we could use another defensive lineman. And, you know, while I'm just listing off the entire roster of starters the Giants need, you know, it's, uh, yeah, uh, definitely glad we have uh, that extra second round pick. Hopefully get something good with that, and then we'll have the high second round pick, and then we'll have the pick early in the draft. And if the Giants are looking quarterback, they should definitely be a little nervous. It is a very highly touted quarterback class and everything, but I've heard this before. I heard it in 2018. The hit rate wasn't great there. Uh, a couple of people were saying, oh, the 2019 class is fine. What became of, <laughs> of those guys? <laughs> um, 2020, you know, you got some guys there. So, you know, there's some hope if you're looking at a rich QB draft class, but it's really hit and miss drafting quarterbacks high in the draft. You got to be really sure. You got to see something. And I don't know what I'd be looking for. So it's it's all up to the GM. Hopefully Shane's able to make the right decision on this one. Because it's going to be a big decision. Uh, yeah, I mean, that Raiders game was just terrible. Just watching an entire team just deflate themselves for 60 minutes on a football field. It it wasn't a great sight. A couple guys that stood out um, were Saquon Barkley, Micah McFadden on the defense, uh, the fifth-round pick at linebacker. And and that's got to be encouraging that we were able to get a draft steal like that, a fifth-round pick at linebacker doing stuff. That's awesome. But it's not awesome for this season because nothing's happening. I'm uh, looking forward to the draft already, and it's barely November. Last year, the draft was the farthest thing from my mind. I was hoping we got the 32nd pick last year. I want to be picking as late in the draft as possible. Now it's like, well, you know, if the Giants did happen to lose a game, I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I physically can't root for them to lose, but if something stupid happens at the end of a game, I'll, I'll just be completely numb to it. and I'll be like, eh, you know, we just get the draft pick. I'm rooting for Saquon Barkley, though. I, that's uh, that's one of the reasons I do kind of hope the team can get a couple extra wins, because I feel like a couple extra wins, especially on the back of a strong run game, might actually convince Joe Shane to sign Saquon Barkley to a couple years. It doesn't have to be a five-year deal. Let's not do anything stupid. But, you know, a nice three-year deal with the two-year out. And Saquon Barkley, you know, he can do things. He's a great player for this team, and it was obvious against the Raiders even. The, most of the offense I noticed while the Raiders were still strongly competing was from Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley helps this team out a lot. Saquon Barkley is the one guy that can still operate with a bad O-line. And that's something that really needs to get fixed is that freaking offensive line. Like It, it was sad that Evan Neal got injured. And I'm like, oh, 
Okay, sucks for Evan Neal. Yeah, yeah. But at least we're getting a better right tackle in. Like, what? <laughs> why Why are some of our backups better than our starters? Why did Tyrod Taylor play better than DJ? Why, why is the backup right tackle play better than Evan Neal? Like, why is this a thing? It's it's really bad. Why are none of the wide receivers doing amazing? Except for Hyatt, of course. Hyatt was open on two deep passes very early on against the Raiders. What does Daniel Jones do? Miss him. Just clean miss. I think he caught the one, but you got to place the ball better a little bit as the quarterback because that ball was like the only way to catch it was for Hyatt to walk out of bounds. <sighs> This team's just in an absolute disarray. Uh, here, here's my outlook. You, we'll keep, like, the coach and everything. The, the main coach. We'll keep Dable around. We'll keep, like, Wink around. And probably have to get rid of a guy like Kafka. Even though I thought he was great last year. I don't know what he's doing this year. Some of these calls are terrible. And some of them, you know, would be offset. Like, last year... It's like, oh, that wasn't a great call. But on the play before, you know, the team picked up nine yards. So he did a weird call on second and one. Now it's third and one. Okay, who cares? Saquon can run a yard and he does. Okay. That was more of like what you'd see last season. This year, oh, yeah, that first down call was like a four-yard out route. So now we're at second and six and he does a weird call. Okay, well, now we're at third and six. And Saquon runs for five yards. Oh, great. Fourth and one. Let's punt. And... It's terrible also that the Giants can't pick up a freaking yard when they need to. It's the same thing in this game. There was two fourth and inches that the Giants were going for. One of them, Evan Neal, has a false start, and so the Giants punt. The other one, they do the stupid tush-push play that does not work for any team but the Eagles. I don't know why any other team in the NFL tries to do it. It's not a thing. It's just terrible. Just have Saquon Barkley go up the middle. I That has to have a higher percent rate. That has to work better. It's Saquon Barkley going up the middle. He's a great running back. And he was doing so much in the backfield against the Raiders too. There was one play he juked a guy behind the line of scrimmage and made a play out of it. He juked like two guys on one play there. and It was only like a seven-yard gain. Like, this is the stuff you can get from Saquon Barkley. That's why Giants really should keep him around. And that's why it's terrible that the season's going downhill, because it makes it less likely that they're going to, because, like I said, if they lose too many games, someone's going to do something stupid and start making bad decisions. And some of the decisions are there to be made when the team's doing bad. Like, if the team's playing really well and Xavier McKinney's getting picks left and right... Okay, you consider paying him that top safety money. But with the way it's going now, Xavier McKinney's not going to come back if he wants any reasonable amount of money. He'll have to go to another team for that. And the Giants are going to be very selective about free agents again. And I thought they were selective this offseason, which is why I didn't think anything too crazy would happen this season with that. But the bad luck has been in the quarterback and right tackle play on the offense. At least the defense was able to look amazing for a few weeks. In this game, the defense was not up to par. I mean, how can you just let a backup quarterback throw on you like that? And it wasn't like the offense had them on terrible positions the entire game. Even the some of the chances the defense had, they didn't like really capitalize on them. You're not doing much with zero sacks. You gotta get some sacks. You gotta pressure the quarterback. Make him throw the picks. Make him fumble. The things that the Giants were able to get Zach Wilson to do. Not, I don't think he threw a bunch of picks or anything, but you know you could really get a quarterback do stuff when you get the pressures and the sacks. That's how you get the turnovers. That's how you get real stops. That was not the case against the Raiders. The Giants, they're just. Ah, they, they're they just a team that decides to let me down time and time again. At least I have next season to look forward to because, you know, the way the Giants go next season, they'll have some inexplicably great year when everyone expects them to suck. We'll, we'll pick up some quarterback in the third round, start the guy, you know, week seven. He'll turn the season around probably. 
and uh, yeah, then the Giants will make the playoffs. You know that that's uh, the way the Giants have been going the past two years. That that's the route that would happen. That that would be the giant thing to do, and then we'll all get excited about this third round pick that took the team to the playoffs, and then uh, turns out, oh yeah, that's right, he was a third round pick, so he'll be terrible next season. Uh, might as well just have the entire offense get injured, and then we'll be zero and seventeen. I mean. That that's that that would be the giant thing to do over the next couple of years. It's just terrible. It's just awful. Because like any other game, right? Like if, if the Raiders were the Cowboys game next week and the Giants kinda lost in a similar fashion, it's like, yeah, whatever, it's the Cowboys. I mean, you know, we're i I'm still on that like six, seven win season thing. You know, where it's like, alright, we'll we'll be like close, we'll recover some stuff, it's fine. But this was the Raiders. And I don't care if Daniel Jones goes down. It was the Raiders. If the defense was a bit better and the offense was just a little bit better, the Giants could have beat the Raiders, which should have looked like they were in complete disarray. But no, it was the Giants getting a bunch of their guys back that looked in complete disarray. It's just... <sighs> How can one team continue to just mess themselves up like this? It's absolutely mind-boggling to me. And of course, you know, you get nothing from the post-game interviews. Post-game interviews, Dable's just up at the press conference like, yeah, you know, we'll we'll keep uh, coaching and stuff. You're like, yeah, are you worried about any of this? No. Yeah, yeah, but Dable, like, you have to have some issues, like, you know, with getting new quarterbacks up to speed. You didn't even let your kicker attempt to kick a ball. Like, do you not have faith in him? It's like, well, we have a kicker on our team, and uh, we'll get DeVito in there. It's like, oh, okay, thank you for this very insightful response, Dave. I'll really appreciate it. I'll say it's better than gotta look at the tape, which is why I'm a fan of keeping Dable around another year, because while he's made some bad decisions, it I don't feel like it's all on him. I feel like it's more on a lot of what's going on with the offense. So if he gives himself an out and fires someone like the offensive line coach and the offensive coordinator and just throw like the wide receivers and special teams coach in there too, just to fire some people, uh, you know, <laughs> he could give himself an out and be like, oh, it was, it was all those guys. And then, you know, it's a bit like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I don't know. I it, it's going to be a lot tougher to do uh the post game uh recaps and stuff when the team's terrible cuz like what what do you really recap and it's like yeah, you know, guys did things and uh in the end didn't matter uh because the season's already over. So, you know, that was a thing. It, it's just going to be pointless after this. Uh, cuz like, I don't even know who to really go for in the draft. Last year, it seemed a bit more obvious. Well, not obvious. Last year, it was, like, so absent-minded. And then as, like, the actual information comes out, because the college season itself is already completely over and everything, you know, then it's like, oh, okay, uh, we're, I'm looking at, like, position groups, because we only need a couple things. I mean, we're going to get mean, because we're going to be like the Texans. <laughs> They're going to be, like, needs all... <laughs> on the mock draft boards, and we're going to be like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> guess we could use that. The only need we don't need is a running back, but watch the owners do something stupid, like not sign Saquon Barkley, and then, hey, we'll need a running back. <laughs> it's just terrible. All right, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.